Back on BTN Live, Dave Refs and Chuck Long and Jerry DiNardo. Michigan heading to UConn this week after what can only be described as an alarmingly close call, guys, <laughs> against Akron. Just did escape against the Zips. Jim Brandstatter is the color commentator for their radio broadcast. He joins us now on the phone. And Jim, first of all, thanks for taking the time to join us. What did you take from that game against Akron? Well, Brady called it a donut game. I called it a sleepwalk game. <laughs> Michigan was sleepwalking through most of the game. And uh, you, you just got to understand in college football, I don't care who you're playing, if you turn it over and you're not emotionally and uh, uh, you know, passionate about you know, what you're doing, you're going to have trouble. And uh, Akron came in with nothing to lose and uh, played like it. And Michigan played like they could throw their helmets out there and win. And that's not a recipe for success. Jim, you've been around this program forever. You probably have even seen some other coaches go in full pads on Sunday. Uh, Brady's reasoning for it, it's, it, it's certainly not a punishment, but he obviously had to have some reasons. W why did he decide to go harder on Sunday th than, than usual? Uh, Coach, I think you know, being in the business as long as you have, sometimes you got to get their attention. And uh, after a game like that against Akron, I think Brady felt, that he needed to get their attention and let them know that, look, we've got goals. They're big goals. And uh, there's only one way we're going to be able to achieve those goals, and that's by getting better each and every week. And I think the, the way he felt he could get that done was uh, telling them on Monday at noon when they had their meeting, we're going to get padded up and we're going to go in pads this afternoon. And that's what they did. So basically I think it was just one of those things that you have to do sometimes to get their attention and let them know that uh, it's a marathon and you got – 12, 13 more weeks left, and we can't have another one like that, or all those dreams that we have are going to go away. Jim, you know, I, I did the game, uh, the Michigan game, and had a chance to talk to you, uh, you know, during the game and after the game. What I, what I saw, start with the defense, is, is the lack of pass rush with their front four. Do you think moving forward that they can get better with the front four, or is Greg Madison going to have to bring some blitz to bring pressure on the quarterback for the rest of the year? I, I think it's a combination of both. I mean, I think Greg, having served time in the NFL, Valley, he knows that he can scheme some things to get some pressure. I know he doesn't want to. He'd love to get a good pass rush with just four guys. And Brady is even puzzled by that because Brady actually gets down in the dirt and coaches that defensive line. And they just got to get better performance out of those guys. And one of the things that Brady has done this week is he's mentioned that, you know, the competition for positions – is still out there. So during practice, guys had better show up because uh, your starting position is not guaranteed. And uh, that goes to those interior three guys on the offensive side of the ball, too, which last week did not have a good week. So I don't know right now whether there will be any changes up there, but clearly this week uh, there's some competition for those positions. One of the voices of the Wolverines is with us, former Michigan offensive lineman Jim Branstetter, their color commentator. It's BTN Live, Dave Revson. Chuck Long and Jerry DiNardo. Jim, we were all singing a different song after Michigan beat Notre Dame. Which, which game gets us closer to what the Michigan team is, the, the Notre Dame game or the Akron game or somewhere in the middle? I, I mean, a week ago, we were, we were all singing the opposite song. Right. I think they're somewhere in the middle, Coach. Uh, here's the key, Devin Gardner. I mean, offensively, you cannot turn the ball over like Devin and expect – to be successful. You've got to make better decisions. Chuck and I had an interesting conversation. I know you guys can talk about it. It's Al Borges wants to be this pro-style, kind of a downhill type team, and yet Devin probably is more comfortable as a shotgun quarterback. So I think offensively there's still an identity there that they need to figure out and keep Devin comfortable and yet keep true to their own principles of how they want to run an offense. But they've got to get better production out of their running back. Devin is still the leading rusher on the team, and I don't think that's the way Brady wants to run an offense or Al Borges wants to run an offense. But, Jim, doesn't some of the responsibility fall on the offensive line? I mean, wh why couldn't they take pressure off of Devin against Akron and not put the game on his shoulders and let the offensive line block somebody? I'm in total agreement with that. And here's the question. Are they good enough up front offensively to do that? You know they are at the tackles. I think Schofield and Lawan are both solid good players. But those three interior guys are brand new, first-year starters. And maybe that's where they've got to get better or the competition has to get tougher up there and find a combination of those five offensive linemen that are going to be able to block even in odd fronts and 
let's face it, they're going to put a lot of eight-man fronts up there, uh, and, and they're going to have to block them. Even when you got an eight-man front, Michigan and Brady wants to be able to run the football and get their tailback going. And so I think you're right. It, it has to be improvement. Uh, I don't know whether it's a change of personnel. I don't know whether it's just getting the guys that are in there better. But it's got to start up there uh, in order to get a guy like Fitz Toussaint uh, off and, and running like they think he can. Where do you think they are with their offensive and defensive lines size-wise, Jim, and numbers-wise in terms of recruiting? Uh, numbers-wise, they're much better. I mean, when Brady came in, that was the biggest job he had. I think when Rich left, there were, I think, eight scholarship offensive linemen and nine scholarship defensive linemen, and you, you should have 14 anyway. Uh, and and they, he's had to build that up. And he has done a great job. He's got a great rotation defensively with some young kids playing, uh, and he's got a bunch of scholarship kids up there. Offensively, it's taken a little bit longer, but uh, losing the three in the middle and this year having three new starters has been a bit of a problem, at least so far. I think they're good enough they can get better. Uh, they've got talented kids up there like Kyle Kalis. But you've got to prove it during a game. It does, you know, none of this stuff shows up on paper. It shows up on Saturday when you play somebody. Jim, your partner in the booth, Frank Beckman, has announced that he is going to retire effective at the end of the year. What goes through your mind when you think about being in that Michigan radio booth without Frank? Um, you know, it's miss, I'll miss a friend, uh, you know, a guy that's been there for a long, long time and called national championship games and uh, – it's one of those things where I'm savoring kind of every moment. You don't think about it uh, prior to his announcement because you think you're going to be doing this forever. And uh, all of us know it's going to end at some time. Uh, by retiring, he's kind of uh, focused me in on enjoying every moment in there that I have with him. He's been so good to the university. I mean, imagine this, guys. University of Michigan has had two play-by-play -play announcers for their statewide radio networks in 65 years. Just two guys, Bob Eufer and Frank Beckman. And so I've had the opportunity to work with Frank for a lot of years. So for me, it's one of those take a step back, understand what you're a part of, and enjoy every moment in this last year. That's kind of how I'm looking at it. Jim Brandstetter, one of the voices of the Wolverines. Thanks so much for joining us, Jim. Great to be with you guys. Take care.